Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's me. It's your old pal, the original gamer, Stevie Stro. Got a question for hey, you. you got your Coco 3 yet? I got my Coco 3. You got yours. Well, what game are we looking at today as we continue our marathon of all things Coco in the month of September? We are looking at Super Pitfall for the Color Computer 3. This was one of the earlier launch titles when the Coco 3 first came out. And it's made by Steve Bjork, who has made some of the most incredible games for the Coco 1 and 2. And Steve Bjork made the um, Pitfall 2, which was an incredible um, game. Just had really good scrolling and, and great background music. Took one of the best games to really take advantage of the speech sound pack and play the synthesized music that was so um, highly underutilized on our Coco 1 and 2. The good thing is about the Coco 3 is that the Coco 3 has enough um, horsepower where instead of now worrying about synthesized music that talented programmers like Steve and many other people were able to do digital music in the background so we can now get background music without the need of the lack of synthesizer that's never been there so um, another cool thing about Super Pitfall is that of all the Pitfall games right there was the original Pitfall which was cross platform came out on the Atari 2600 was on basically every console of the day um, Pitfall 2 again cross platform on multiple consoles you know atari consoles coleco consoles you name it um super pitfall that we're looking at only lived on two systems one of them was the coco 3 and the other one was the nintendo I'm not, i don't remember if it was the super nintendo or the regular nintendo but this version of pitfall only lived on two systems and one of them was ours so how cool is that what cool bragging rights do we have there so let's jump in and check out the game so i recognize that music Okay, so here's Pitfall Harry. So I've got a jump button. Okay, that's a bad guy. You start off blinking at first. That looks like a spider. So, um... There's our little staircase. Was that a gun? I got a gun. I've now got 40 bullets. Okay, let me climb down the ladder. Ooh, please don't fall and die. Okay, I felled and I died it. Okay. Um... Is that my number of lives? 65? I'm a little bit confused. I'm not sure which version I pulled up here. Die, frog! Let's see where this ladder takes us. Hopefully, um, somewhere safe. Let's jump across here. Scrolling's pretty good. Oh, spider. Spider, spider on the wall. Spider got me. And I, yeah, so somehow I think the version I'm playing is uh, somewhat of a modified version because I've got 64 lives left, okay? And uh, based on the way I play, I need every single one of them. But um, yeah, how cool is this though? That reminds me of Pitfall 2. Ooh, I just fell into bubbling lava. Wow. Okay, 63 lives to go. <laughs> All right, can I jump across here? I'm not sure. I'm willing to gamble one of my 63 lives to find that out. That's kind of cool. You can jump across. Though I still I still have 36 bullets left. Can I jump across here? Okay, the fish got me. Okay, that's a cool looking fish. Looks kind of Mario-esque, something you might see in the Super Mario world or something. Okay, can I come down here? Okay, there's snakes. So that reminds me of Pitfall 2 a little bit. Okay, swim, Harry. Yeah, so this is kind of like a cross between Pitfall and Mario in small sense. He looks a little tiny bit Mario-ish as well. Look out for that stupid frickin' piranha chopper thing over there. Background music is good. This is one of the things I loved about Pitfall 2 was the non-stop music. It was the music that you love to hear, but after a while you're like, okay, well, I heard it. But when it first happened, that music, to have um, multi-voice background music on a Coco that wasn't your normal kind of organy sounding traditional Coco music was pretty impressive. Um, so at least that thing didn't kill me, but it knocked me down. It's a neat game though. Um, from what I understand, there's just a tremendous amount of level data in here too. Like the world is just insanely immense as far as how much scenery you're um, going through. What is that thing there? Okay, I just like, what is that? Like I'm playing cards? Oh, here's some money. I like money. I like me some money. Can I make this jump? I don't know. Let's try it. I made the jump. I'm in a dead end. I'm going to risk one of my 60 some odd lives. Okay, well. No risk, no reward. Okay, so am I still on that side? I'm still on that side. Can I jump back over? Ah, 
Ah, oh, maybe if you hit the jump button in time. 59 lives and counting. But who's counting? All right, let's try this again. Jump, Harry! Okay, we made it. We made it. What's down here? More peril. More peril. Yeah, I told you, I need these 60 lives. I'm going to go through 60 lives like it's nobody's business. Ah, oh, crap head. Come on, dude. frog and a spider. Wouldn't a frog eat the spider? Aren't they like natural predators to one another? Okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, that's not cool. 56 lives and counting! Can I jump off? Ugh, curse you, frog. Dang it, I'm down to 55 lives. Am I gonna have enough? I don't know. Get me the heck out of here, Jane. Bullets don't work on something that's lower than your kneecaps. Okay, nice. Gold. Can I squat and shoot? No, I still... You apparently cannot shoot spiders. Can I shoot the stupid frog? You bet your butt I can die, frog. About freaking time. I can't... I, you can't like get off the stupid ladder. How do I get off the stupid ladder? Then you gotta be like down. Okay, that's interesting body of water there. All right, I can't go any lower because that's just like a little duck and cover hole down there. All right, so I've made it to the end here. Okay, whoa, that was luck. That was like last minute freaking luck. Okay, this thing here screwed with me. Let me get out of its way. All right, yeah, very large levels. I, not having the manual to the game, I don't know what the final um, goal is. I don't know if there's like some person you have to rescue or a certain number of things you need to get. Oh, different scenery. Or maybe this was the original scenery. Maybe this is where I first started. I don't remember. What do I know? I know nothing. I like it though. Yes, got the bat. Cannot get spiders. Yeah. So I don't remember if this is where the game started or not, but, ooh, Pitfall Harry. Player one, get ready. 55 lives remaining. Can I do it? I don't know. Okay, now, if this is the one I'm thinking of, if I go straight down there, that's a drop to certain death. Yeah, I think this is actually the beginning of the game. All right, so I need to venture further outward. Yeah, gotcha, stupid frog. Let's climb on down here again. That's water. Oh, that's a flying bat wing. Okay, what's down here? That's a spider. Oh, frickin' bat. Ding bat. 54 lives left. How am I? Hi, this is John Linville. And Neil Blanchard. We are the Coco Crew. I hope you're enjoying watching Stevie Strode play video games, especially the Coco games. And when you're done with that, check out our podcast at CocoCrew.org. I'm going to make this happen. I don't know. Curse you, Bat. Be gone with you. Oh, and those are spikes, so I can't get across there anyways. Freaking spikes over there. What do you want from me? I don't know. What do you want from me? I don't know, but this is just driving me crazy here right now. Can I get back across that bat, man? That bat is just ruining my day. 
that frickin' piranha chop fish, fish thing there. Uh, oh, can I go down? Ooh, where am I going? Ooh, I found a whole new area. Oh my god. Wow, this world has suddenly got very large. Now, I keep falling. I'm wondering, I'm just wondering if I should have um, maybe moved to the side somewhere and um, allowed myself to land on one of those platforms. Or I wonder if that's not even an option if you just have to now work your way back up. But what I've just found here is that this world is immensely huge and large. What the hell is that thing? Scorpion? High speed scorpion? Oh my god, I only got 52 lives left. Can I make it? You can't shoot these sons of biscuits. Oh man, he just hauled tail right towards me too. Cannot shoot the scorpions. Oh, there's the balloon. That remind that's a throwback from Pitfall 2. Can I jump across here? No, but can I swim down and climb that ladder? Oh, I don't know. Hmm. Snakes, mean snakes. Okay, so now I'm stuck. I'm gonna have to swim across. I'm gonna have to swim. All right, let's see what we can do here. I mean, I'm almost out of my 50 some odd lives. So, I like the levels though. I like the background music. Can you not eat me? Thank you for not eating me. All right, let's get up. All right, let's try this again. I saw that, oh, okay. Jump over you, knucklehead. Get that damn balloon. Come to me, balloon. Stay away from me, bat. You son of a biscuit. I can't steer myself. Pitfall 2, you could steer your ascent. And I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with that spade symbol over there. Kind of reminds me a little bit of like Sonic the Hedgehog and stuff too, but this was years before that game was ever out. But it's neat. It's got a platformer element to it. What is your problem there, dude? I don't know what the heck that is. Oh, that's neat. That's actually kind of neat. Can I jump up here? Yes, I can. Neat. Okay, that was another symbol. Another one of these symbols. I've got another one of those symbols. I don't know what they do. Hmm. Picking up some coinage. Some gold bars. I like the uh, palette animation on those things. How they kind of shimmer and shine. Nice touch. Oh, thank you for not killing me, Bat. I got, oh, I just, man. All right. Hi, this is Ryan Klein. I'm at the 2016 Coco Fest. And you're watching the original Gamer TV show. This is neat, though. The, the world is much larger than I imagined. So the amount of, of level data, the amount of, um, uh, oh, can I make it past this jump here? I don't know. Barely within my abilities. Yes. Oh, dude. I only got 50 lives left. I'm not sure what I'm going to be able to do here. But I'll use my little blinking moment here to cross as many of these stupid things as I can. Yeah, these things are tough. 49 lives left. Can he do it? Oh, what an idiot. So even when you're blinking, falling down on spikes is no, um, no uh, consolation. Hmm. I got for that snake. This is neat. These, this world is huge. It does remind me, and I could see why this would be on a Nintendo platform, because there are definitely some Nintendo elements to it, some like Mario World, Super Mario Brother type elements to the the kind of castle-y type experience. Ah, oh, you idiot! But yeah, this was um, this was an impressive thing, and if you've seen some of the commercials I've played in my videos, you know, 
One of the te- Coco 3 commercials says, Yeah, you know, Jeff and Elliot just got home from school and Jeff's playing Super Pitfall on his color computer. So this was a good premiere title. Especially to be one of the close to launch titles of the Coco 3 to have a good licensed uh, official game. You know, in the world of Coco 1 and Coco 2, we had so many clones. Why am I not jumping? Uh, we had just so many clones, so many knockoff games. It was nice to have some legitimacy with some of our software, you know, some of our games. It made you feel like, you know, I think there was definitely a lot more first party officially licensed titles for the Coco 3 than there ever was for the Coco 1 and 2. And I know Steve Bjork did a ton of them. Um, what is going on, everybody? I am the original gamer, Stevie Stroh. How are you? In honor of this August 5th weekend of me reaching 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, I am going to now make available for the first time ever an exclusive piece of merchandise that I created for the 25th annual Last Chicago Coco Fest. This is my color computer gaming DVD. Grab yourself a copy of the official Last Chicago Coco Fest 25th anniversary Coco Games DVD produced and made available by me, the original gamer Stevie Stro, available only at ogstevistro.com. But I'm just wondering, what made the planets align for that to happen? Was it part of the fact that now the computer was robust enough to, you know, present a game that looked more like, um, you know, what Commodore and Atari and Apple computers could do? You know, because Coco 3 had 16 colors and stuff. You know, I'm not sure. I don't know what that symbol there is. I can't get to that symbol and I'm stuck. So I think I've played enough to show off this game. This is not a playthrough. I am not going to play the whole thing. I would not know how to play the whole thing if my life depended on it. But I will say this, as I definitely appreciate this game. There's a lot going on here. There is scrolling. There's background music. There's foreground sounds. There's the character moving. There's all the sprites in the animation. There's a lot of color on the screen. This is actually quite impressive, um, and I like it a lot. And so I hope you've enjoyed this preview as well of Super Pitfall for the Color Computer 3. Have you got your Coco 3 yet? I got mine. So um, if you enjoyed this video, leave it a, leave a comment, give it a like, let me know what you thought about it. If there's more games you want to see, make sure you let me know. Put in a comment, tell me what game you'd like to see next. In the meantime, if you have never heard the Coco Crew podcast, make sure you listen to them. Go to CocoCrew.org, find out about the Coco Crew podcast, listen to their episodes. Uh, John Linville and Neil Blanchard are doing one bang-up job representing our community. If you need to know more about the color computer, you might want to check out this book here. Coco, The Colorful History of Tandy's Underdog Computer by Boise Pete and Bill the Judas. It is a great book that will tell you everything you need to know about the color computer. And if you need more Coco game videos, if you need more game videos than you can handle on YouTube, you can take the experience offline by ordering yourself a copy of my official Coco Games DVD that I produced for Coco Fest 25. It contains over 20 videos and three hours of nonstop Coco awesomeness for your viewing pleasure. Uh, and that's on my website, ogstevistro.com. You also find a link to Boise Boise's book there too, Boise and Bills. And until the next video, keep on gaming Coco forever, everybody, and happy Coco gaming. Bye bye.